maybe a little bit different than um, what we're normally looking at is uh, a, a new way to kind of measure things. As we all know, every single time we hop into a Google Ads account, those revenue numbers tied to the products are all fake. So this is another way to think about how your campaigns are affecting your overall sales. Google will be deprecating the Google Ads conversion tracking to consolidate to GA4. Now that is scary. This is going to sound stupid, but don't look at the overall numbers. This is going to look really, really bad. It's not. So uh, first, that's going to be maybe a little bit different than um, what we're normally looking at is uh, a, a new way to kind of measure things. I've been using this with a uh, with for example, or if it's going to be on YouTube, I've been using this for a client that sells a lot of new and repeat. Um, so it's a really good example to see the spend against all of the revenue sales. So I'm going to share screen as this loads. So we have uh, individual Google ads uh, campaigns running primarily in shopping. So here's some things to think about too when you're looking at measuring product performance that may give you a bit of a different insight as to what your overall marketing is actually achieving for a specific type of product based on the campaigns that you're running. So in this account, and I've obviously I know it's a huge account, but it's used just as an example. It applies to large, small, doesn't matter. Is actually using analytics. So when you don't have Nordbeam, which a lot of our clients don't, I think only like 20 clients do, some ways that you can measure overall performance, that's not just standard shopping first click and in, in MER, <clears throat> is going to be the cross-pollination that your campaigns have with each other and the overall effectiveness that your campaigns have on very specific type of products. So it came up in discussion this morning with NextGuard, which is one of the products that our client sells. Now, we don't have a huge budget for NextGuard when you're talking about the um, yeah. overall budget. It's like right now, if you look at just from January 1st through 19th, we have 300 K in spend and only 30 of that. So 10% of our budget is to, uh, next guard here. Now, when you're looking at overall MER media efficiency ratio for that campaign looks good for them. The cost of acquiring a customer is 130. We want to be under 140 when possible. And we have 29,000 in spend and 28,000 in revenue. The MER is one. Now, this is only targeting, as much as we can, new customer non-brand cold traffic. So people looking for NextGuard. Yes, there is some repeats in here, but it's primarily new focused. And I say new focused because, um, and I, I forgot, who was the person that just dropped in the Google uh, ads channel uh, that GA4 is going to be taking over GTM? Who was that? I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot already. Um, it was Dean. Dean, yes, Dean. So, you, uh, so Dean heard from a friend that... Google will be deprecating a Google ads conversion tracking to consolidate to GA4. Now that is scary because rather than having analytics and then Google ads and then GA4, we might just have analytics or we might just have GA4, no ads and no analytics. And we're primarily set up on, on GTM. <clears throat> so this is another way to think about how your campaigns are affecting your overall sales. This looks very far from what is uh, actually happening with this client. This is a simple snapshot in time, primarily for new customers. Now, Mer looks good, 2.59, good. But when you're looking at NextGuard, we have $28,000 in revenue with our conversions and either new or returning. It, that's what Mer is. It's new, repeat, it doesn't matter. That's what Mer measures is everything. There's 226 transactions of 53% compared to last period because we increased our budgets. Scaling well. So we have 34% increase in spend, 68% increase in revenue. Yay. Everything looks green across the board when we're running standard shopping. <clears throat> in the back end of analytics, what you can do is go into conversions, e-commerce, product performance. If you wanted to get a little bit more specific with your own efforts, maybe running Facebook, maybe running other channels, you can simply look at a Google CPC view. Again, this is going to go away in GA4, but GA4 is going to have a version of this available. But from the next six months, we can use this for right now um, because it is a good way to measure, is this working for them? Now, <clears throat> and I'm looking at Google CPC traffic for this month. I can actually see the total revenue that's coming off of that specific product. It's almost like MER to an individual product. We can't control 
if a person clicks on a product and buys a different product, that's that's completely you know out of our hands. But what we can see is the total sales that actually came from this. There's two hundred forty-four thousand dollars in product revenue, and there's nineteen ninety-one unique purchases <clears throat> that is coming in from Google. This is first click, last click. I wouldn't talk about Google, just Google. I'm not saying Omni Channel. First click, last click, new returning. It's everything. So what's cool about this is we can get to see, okay, is this actually working here well? And if you're looking at a mer by product, if you're marketing a specific product or maybe a group of products, you can type in that, that group of products here. So you can actually use advanced search and use multiple. If you want to see multiple different variations of a group of products like hair ties and scrunchies, blah, blah, blah. And you can start to see, well, what is actually Google bringing in? Now, yes, this is going to be the branded traffic that you're going to get from Facebook will probably come through SEM because they saw an ad on Facebook. Okay, that's fine. We're dual measuring. What is our individual approach to our campaign? What are using Google ads? It's going to look barely similar because this is just all cash in, all cash out. It's it's close. <clears throat> or if we look at analytics, you're going to see also the total sales of that product. And now we switched from smart shopping last year to then standard shopping this year. This is going to sound stupid, but don't look at the overall numbers. This is going to look really, really bad. It's not. It's just there was a larger amount of products that have been removed, so they look worse. But we're what we're tracking year over year, which is their, their standard products that they sell, the product revenue has gone up 130% and the purchases have gone up 97%. This each one of the products that have been consistent year over year, not the ones that were removed from analytics and and now we look like we have an overall loss, but the products that are still available to us with the next card title <clears throat> is looking much better. So we're seeing an increase in unique purchases kind of across the board. And that's what's been good for this is when we started to do uh co-op reporting, which you know is is essentially just you know reporting of of campaign effectiveness when we started going after brand new users of this product at scale and not spend our money on primarily was the repeat users before in this company went on smart shopping or before when this company was on smart shopping out of forty five thousand purchases per month only seven thousand were new now we flip this thing completely around where 80 percent of the purchases are new so we're starting to see more more purchases of this product because our ad spend go is going to a new audience. We're starting to see everything lift up. There isn't, I think, one that went down. Um, this one here, three ninety five to this one. This one was deprecated, uh, and you're going to start to see if it's just zero. These are the ones that are no longer selling anymore. So there is a mix of products. That's why I can't look at the overall. But of the ones that had sales before and after, this one did go down. But everything else went from 6 to 40, 29 to 46, 40 to 86, 34 to 40. Everything is looking up, which is good. So of the ones that actually were live from last year to this year, I think there was a chat that came in. Uh, oh, does analytics track every sale? It gets very, very, very close. Um, when you when I've taken a look at the back end of uh, the UA e-commerce product performance, and I've measured that against the, um, the Shopify SKUs, they're very close, um, which is which, which is good. And we've used this tactic uh, before. We're trying to identify what campaign was selling what products, but now knowing that conversion paths are this big, um, it gives us a mer kind of buy the product. So if we're saying, hey, we need to sell more, I don't know, purple picture frames, pick it, it doesn't matter. And you start to send cold traffic to the purple picture frame, and you look to see, does the overall revenue of that purple picture frame increase? And at what mer from the ad spend you're spending on that product to the actual sales that that product is producing? <clears throat> this is important because we have clients that have low and high margin. We have products that have, uh, clients that have products that are low and high, um, well, prof, uh, net uh, margin. So both gross and net are sometimes different. Sometimes a $5,000 sale on an item doesn't really net them that much money. Um, if they have a very low profit margin on that high value item and sometimes reverse. So when looking at different clients and looking at different AOVs, uh, we had an issue, not really an issue. We had a client that experienced a difference. Um, this is not a glitch. 
I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you want to work with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google Ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com, that's S-O-L-8.com, to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm rhythm so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. And this is actually uh, yesterday. I was talking to this client here because they called me freaking out um, because they just didn't, they didn't look at their numbers correctly. So what was it to yesterday was 19. So I did one through the, oh, sorry, one through 18 compared to the previous year. And the client says, oh my gosh, what's happening? You know, we're, we're, we're losing out on money. But they didn't scroll down a little bit further down and be like, oh, okay, well, actually our orders are going up though. So the average order value decreased because this is more new customer traffic. So what was interesting here is we actually made more sales than last year, but they lost 31% revenue. They had more draft orders. They had less online store. When we, I had them install the Buy the Numbers app and we actually have more new customers this, this year than last year by about 20%. That's why the returning customer rate is actually going down. So this is all good. But what we're looking at is, okay, well, the profit margin is potentially better. They didn't have enough data on their side to tell me if they actually made more net revenue off of this because it was a different type of product. But what we came to the conclusion is we need to test all products uniquely. So a standard shopping campaign for pendants, watches, bracelets, necklaces, et cetera. Great. Good, good. Fine. We had more sales on more new customers, but they were buying cheaper products. Why? Well, these repeat purchases of theirs will sometimes spend 20 grand per purchase. And so that was that's what we kind of came about this is, yes, there was overall less revenue. Yes, there was overall more sales. So the client doesn't necessarily care about sales. They care about revenue first. So that tells us that looking at individual spend and return is going to win, win out against everything else when you're talking about being able to control the individuality of that. I don't even know if individuality is a word, but it is today. So that's what we're going to be seeing <clears throat> is how do we start to get more sales, consistent sales on a very specific type of product and what's the gross and net profit margin. This separates us from, from others when we're looking at ROAS. Obviously, that's a bad indicator, but that is a bad number. But again, going down further, this is a good number. So there's no problem. There just is a change of strategy. If this if this went up on the same products that their existing audience buys, then we wouldn't have even gotten a phone call. So it kind of makes us a little bit deeper of a level. Clients just look at spend in, spend out. We say, okay, it's spending. This is new. This is repeat. This is the gross. This is the net. And this is what we need to change. And this is where more traffic needs to go to. And more often than not, it can be measured by, well, I'm, I'm spending more on this type of product. Am I getting more unique sales on it? Even if you can't take full credit for it, that's okay. Mer means that if it is holding true to what we can see in Google and potentially Norpium if we have it. And if we start to increase that, we should see more new sales coming in for that product, even if it's not us. Uh, Colby asks, would looking at CAC initially avoided the worry? Not necessarily. Um, I took two hours and got them to then look at that. Yep. Um, and we developed a spend and a rev um, target. Um, so CAC was better, but what the LTV is of those users. I told them yesterday, I said, this is, you're, you're brand new to Google right now. I actually hopped into other performance max campaign and showed them how we had a product with zero clicks and one sale. I said, this is why we're hopping off. It's because I didn't do anything for you. Your, your customer came back and bought it again. So that's what was really cool is I was able to show them that there was fake repeat traffic that was giving them the ROAS. And after two hours of going through this, he said, ah, perfect. And then we just agreed to keep doing what we were doing before. So it was just client education. So the nice part about this, though, is we can then measure more so than what's going on because we all know every single time we hop into a Google Ads account, those revenue numbers tied to the products are all fake.
We're going to dive right in, and the topic for today, the discussion topic, is going to be MER, Media Efficiency Ratio. And what MER is, Media Efficiency Ratio, is think of it like company ROAS. So all cash spend out on paid media versus all revenue in. 